alone. What's happening? Downtown's under attack. People are getting killed. But we have to get out of here. And right now, we need to leave. Leave? I'm supposed to be getting married in 39 days, Dad. People are dying just two miles away. Go! Go! Get out of here! Run! It's chaos. It's anarchy. Joining me today is Doc Johnson. Patrick Johnson, he's the writer-producer of The Reliant, which is going to be a Fathom film event coming up later this week. Kevin Sorbo's in the movie. A lot of stuff going on. Doc Johnson, thanks for being with us. Hey, thanks for having me. So, Doc, first of all, The Reliant. Tell us a little bit about it and why it's going to be a one-night-only Fathom event. Well, we don't have a millions for marketing that a lot of uh, Hollywood studio movies film and movie movie and film and films have. So we had the three hundred thousand dollars, and the best use of that money was a one night fathom event that gave our friends and family. We've we've had over two and a half million video views of our trailer. They gave them an opportunity to see the movie in th theaters, and we are we are doing great sales with DVD. We've we've sold. 60,000 Walmart DVDs to 3,200 Walmarts, 40,000 Redbox DVDs, and we have a Netflix deal. So it's doing really well. Post-production already, that's even before it comes to theaters. And we already have theaters selling out. We've been told that 80% of ticket buyers will buy it the week of. And as we begin this week, we had already sold out uh, three theaters. So we're thankful for that. And Kevin Sorbo gave a great interview on Fox & Friends this morning, and he's going to be in New York City all week pushing the film and outlets. So... We're hoping to get sellouts all over the country. Narrative of the Reliant is an interesting story. This has to do with an economic breakdown, has to do with faith, has to do with Second Amendment rights. What can you tell us as the writer uh, about putting this script together? Well, one of the distributors who read the script early on said this is the most realistic precipitating crisis he's ever seen in a film. And every film has a crisis that puts your protagonist in a difficult situation. Ours is a collapse of the dollar. An economic collapse that results in rioting, looting, and one man trying to protect his five siblings and his wife from the chaos, and they're targeted, and the children pretty much have to run to the woods with what they can carry, and the moral dilemma is they're struggling why a good God would let this happen. So it is a faith-based film, even though it is rated R. It was rated R for violence back in October. We had to re-edit. We finally got a PG-13. The the liberals just simply couldn't couldn't stand that young people were using arms to defend themselves. It's like Third Dawn, except they're younger kids. Now, now I and, understand uh, one of the more controversial scenes was the fact that you had a, a 13 or a 12 year old using a gun to defend his family members. Yeah, we had uh, Alex Kendrick, who was a blessing to the production and post-production, gave us great advice. He had a theater come out that grossed uh, tens of millions of dollars recently called Overcomer. He gave us great advice as well as the U.S. Concealed Carry Association president and they both thought that it was this underage kid who used a gun to defend himself that resulted in the rated R. Because uh, there are so many PG-13 films, far more violent than ours. Expendable, um, Jurassic Park, um, World War Z was rated PG-13. And when you, you know, Suicide Squad. And so when you see ours compared to theirs, it's a joke. They're very politically biased. Regardless, we finally got our PG-13, even though the the... Our fans and friends really look forward to seeing the unrated version in DVD, which will be available later. It's it's uh, more realistic. It was important for me to have realistic action, which faith-based film tend to do poorly at. I wanted to make sure that if you took out the faith-based elements, we would compete with the best Hollywood studio has to offer for film, post-production, for visual special effects and sound design. As a matter of fact, we have won 18 first place film festival awards, including six at secular festivals. Um, Brian Bosworth won several awards for his acting, Kevin Sorbo, Molly Gray, we've won two for best score. We're excited about that. Best cinematography, best produce. Two film festivals gave us best producer because, as Kevin Sorbo said, this would have been a $10 million movie in a studio. And let's get the information out. If people want to find out where the Reliant film is playing near them, they can go to a website. What can they do? They go to the, the ReliantMovie.com, the ReliantMovie.com, and put in their zip code. They can also see the trailer there. And we have three trailers, two and a half million views on our three trailers, um, with less than $10,000 marketing money so far. So we're pretty pleased at what we got. And it's a, it's a, uh, even liberals are posting about this trailer more than conservatives are. 
um, sometimes with vulgarity, but they're all <laughs> urging others to watch this crazy Sorbo video. And it's somebody started the myth that this is Kevin Sorbo versus Antifa. <laughs> well, Antifa is not in the movie. Hey, any publicity is good publicity, right? <laughs> good publicity. It's you know, it's a it's a fear we all have. We all have seen the rioting after Super Bowls, hurricanes, when officers get acquitted in in a jury trial. The kind of rioting that happening it hits the hits the news sometimes. Not so much now, especially with with the race conflicts. Those don't hit the news. But it used to hit the news a lot, and it, and it, and it, uh, so this movie really plays on that fear of being surrounded by lighter, rioters and needing to protect your loved ones. And it's a, it's a realistic precipitating crisis, but it, it does emphasize the need to have the means on our person to be able to defend ourselves and our loved ones. This film asks questions and shows, not tells the answer. As they say in, in cinema, you're supposed to show, not tell. And... Um, the question is, why does God let bad things happen to good people? We put our protagonists in a difficult situation. How would the good God we've been raised by our parents, parents to believe in let this happen to us if he was all powerful? And so we, we, we let them ride that question through the film as one of the four siblings really becomes a prodigal son. And ultimately, we honor God in, in the conversion of not only... Um, one of the protagonists, but also one of the chief villains in the story, played by Brian Bosworth. As a matter of fact, if you watch the film, the baptism in the movie is that character's genuine baptism. Um, the story, the script had such an impact on him, he decided to get baptized in the scene where he is baptized in the movie. So uh, the Benham brothers, who are best-selling entrepreneurs. Are you sure that's not why you got the R rating initially? <laughs> <In this laughs> it is <culture>. quite possible. <laughs> Yeah, zombies eating people, uh, PG-13, but somebody getting baptized, oh yeah, boy, that's that great. That would art. be controversial. <laughs> All right. Well, Doc Justin, it's the Rye movie. It's coming out this Thursday. And once again, what's the website people can go to? Go to thereliantmovie.com to watch our crazy trailer that are driving anti-gunners bad so and prepare for the ride of your life. There's, a, there's no other faith-based movie like The Reliant, and we're convinced people are going to love it. All right, Dr. Patrick Johnson, thanks for being with us. We appreciate it. Thank you so Thank much. You so much.